Now, as you know, and again, most of you know what this means, President Ilves was born in Stockholm because his parents had fled communism in the Second World War from Estonia, and then they moved to New Jersey. He grew up in New Jersey. He was elected to the European Parliament with the largest number of votes that any Estonian politician has ever received in any, any election. And then in 2006 he was elected president, which he has been since then. And he is of course a tireless promoter of Estonia, and it is a great pleasure for all of us, I'm sure, that President Ilves will now speak to us today. There's, a, there's been this ongoing political battle in the United States between the issue of austerity and quantitative easing. And in order to make a case for one side, there's a New York Times columnist named Paul Krugman who insists on bashing whoever he, he can find to bash to prove his case for the domestic politics of the United States. And so, uh, as it happened last year, he decided to cherry pick some data, which I understand is commonplace. Uh, and then selectively presenting these data, just say a lot of nasty things about my country. Uh, and uh, since I don't really, uh, I mean, I don't really have a big uh, sort of axe to grind on austerity policy, I just don't like my country being insulted, I did tweet. So I did, uh, all I did was write 640 characters. Uh, that's, so, um, uh, but the result, 840, uh, 40, sorry, six tweets, 140 characters. And uh, the net result was that I began, people wanted to argue with me constantly on austerity versus growth. Uh, and, uh, you, where we have agreed upon certain rules, and I'll get to those, if you follow the rules, they're not actually that dumb, these rules. I mean, basically, you shouldn't have a deficit more than 3%. You shouldn't borrow more than 60% of your GDP. Um, and if you don't do that, you generally won't get into trouble. And all the countries that, have, uh, that are currently in, uh, that you see in, uh, in Europe in trouble, they violated one or the other of those rules, or they have, have closed their eyes and, uh, to what their banks are doing, and then don't follow banking rules. And we didn't do that. We just followed the rules, you know, because small guys like us, you survive if you follow the rules, maybe. But one thing is for sure is that if you're small and you don't follow the rules, you're going to get in trouble. And so we being sort of conservative northern peasant people decided that it's the rule of law that is, uh, that is the, what we believe in. And having, having been so successful uh, in coming out of the Soviet Union, we then uh, we became so successful that uh, we had an overheated economy. And it was bound to collapse sometime or another, and so we had this massive uh, sort of economic uh, downturn. Uh, at which point, uh, the government decided that it would bite the bullet. Uh, this is where the whole austerity and the growth debate comes in, because Estonia was outside of the Eurozone. We did not have uh, we did not have uh, any place to borrow from at any kind of normal rates. I mean, we could have borrowed at 11% interest or something, but that would have been self-defeating. So there we were. There was nothing. No one was coming to help us. We're outside of the Eurozone. And so what is the option? Well, if you're a farmer peasant type, you just cut your expenses, and that's what our farmer peasant government did, was cut, the, the, cut expenses. Which, of course, leads to unemployment, and uh, because you have to hire people. And there we were, with a 18% decline in the economy, and nowhere to really borrow money from, and with the IMF saying devalue, 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 which was also the advice that Paul Krugman kept, that's where he initially became, sort of came into his radar screen, because he kept saying we're going to devalue. Uh, we couldn't devalue because all of our people had borrowed. We had borrowed. Well, the people who had bought their houses had borrowed uh, 
the money, the money for their houses from uh, in euros, and we were not, we didn't have the euro at the time. And if we had devalued, we basically would have, we would have wiped out the the middle class. We would have wiped out all those people who, in fact, took a risk to buy their own home. And so we could not face that. Uh, we could not do that to to the most enlightened, risk-taking part of society. Uh, and so we simply bit the bullet and decreased expenses and. And so that's, that's how we came out of it, uh, by austerity. I mean, it worked. We did also do some key, uh, key reforms in the labor market, which li we liberalized the labor market, uh, actually analogous to uh, the, the Hart's reforms of uh, Gerhard Schroeder. Bless his little heart. Um, and he, uh, so we came out of it, and we ended up, well, once after this trough, we then had 8.6% growth, and the next year for that we had 5.3, this year we're going to have 3.6%. And we're coming out of it, and we're over, we're, we're past where we were in 2007, and where we, where we were in 2007 wasn't real anyway, because basically we had people who were living on loans, and they were, it was not sustainable. So today, in Europe, we have probably the soundest, soundest economy with the best fundamentals with uh, with a zero point minus zero point five de deficit. So we're in the red at 0.5 percent, or rather half a percent, uh, where the, the we're supposed to be under three. Uh, there are only a few governments that are under three these days. Then, and when it comes to indebted the public debt. The goal is you have to be below 60% of GDP. There are only four countries that are below 40% of 60% of, of GDP, and and uh, Estonia has the lowest public debt, that is 10% of GDP. But we are, in fact, a IT computer superpower today, even though we're just 1.3 million people. Uh, you all know, of course, that Skype came from Estonia. But there are hundreds and hundreds of new Skypes right now coming uh, out of Estonia. Last year, there was a com competition of the startups, uh, of computer startups in Europe, and they took and of the they picked out of these thousands of startups, thirty as the best. Seven of the thirty startups from all of Europe were Estonian startups, and the first and the third. In first and third place were Estonian startups, and in fact, the guys who got first place took the fifty thousand dollar prize money and gave it to the number two. Said we don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is why, which is why, uh, I mean, this is an example of the kind of uh, the uh, the things that we do in Estonia that shows, first of all, an investment in education fifteen years ago did pay off. We do have lots of kids now. We are. We now are teaching programming from grade one as a pilot program. I hope next year we'll go in all over. Uh, we now teach statistics in high school. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's good or bad, but anyway, now teach it uh, um, via, com I mean, using computers, so you know, no longer now have to know what a standard deviation is. There's one standing here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but in any case. Uh, we do rather well in this field, and uh, so my pitch to you is that if you want to know which way the world's going, take a look at Estonia. Uh, 